G'day, it's Robbie here again. Well, occasionally I get asked by my viewers, what's a good starter set for tooling for your new metal lathe? You know, you've bought a new metal lathe, or it's a, it could be any size lathe, it could be new, old, whatever. But the same situation applies throughout. What's the basic set of tooling you need to use one of these? And uh, it's a good question. When you buy a new lathe, quite often you'll get a set of carbide tooling thrown in with it. You'll get a, a dead centre for the tailstock. And that's about it. So the question is, what's the minimum amount of tooling you need to actually do something on a metal lathe? And where should I go to from that? Well, let's have a, a quick look at it. Well, to answer this question, you've really got to look at what you're going to be doing with it. And here's a good example. Alright. You're going to be machining on the outside. You're going to be machining up to a shoulder. And it could be on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. You're going to be drilling a hole. And you're going to be opening the hole up. And in this case it's gone in a fair way. And there are your basic functions. Outside turning, inside turning, and of course you'll be coming up the shoulders. The lathe can allow you to do tapers and all sorts of stuff, but basically they are the primary uh, functions you need to be able to, to do with your tooling. So to do that, what do we need? Well, I'll, I'll show you. So here we have what I consider the absolute minimum requirement for metal lathe use. You need tooling that can do the outside of the job. You need tooling that can do the inside of the job. So we've got a boring bar here. You need a parting off blade. Ideally, you could just get away with a hacksaw you need a drill bit for the tail stock. You need a centre drill so you can drill in to the end of the job to support it. You need the support. You need a, a dead centre which will come with your lathe always if it's a new lathe. Or you could have something a bit more sophisticated. So this is the absolute minimum that you need to get going. You can actually get by with just that one, that one uh, external tool, because that will do um, width, width, width-wise. It will do faces to the left. It will do faces to the right. That would actually do the whole gamut of turning that you're going to do externally. But of course, it's not ideal. And if you are starting off, it's well worth your while to do what I did, what most people do, and buy a set of uh, tooling with a range of angles that you can easily use. So we swap out the single tool, external tool, for a set. And this is my original set. This is a good set. It's TCMT. That's the type of insert. It's called TCMT. And it was recommended to me by a toolmaker when I first got going. There are a lot of different styles of carbide insert you can get. But TCMT is very good because it's got quite a, uh, a decent radius on the nose. The angle of the insert dictates how... Uh, well it will work generally and the narrower they get on the angle the, the poorer finish you tend to get it depends how you use them because you can come in on an angle with them and do all sorts of things but for beginners TCMT is a really good choice you can see there's a well used but you can see which ones are used the most this one and this one 
These don't get used anywhere near as often because most of the time you're turning towards the headstock. So that's a good set to get. That's all your external stuff. Boring bars. Now, if you get a one of guy buy a boring bar and you do need boring bars for internal work, you can buy little ones or you can buy big ones. That's a good size little one. That's a handy size big one. But remember, a small boring bar can do a small job, a small hole, and it can do a big hole. A big boring bar can only do a big, big hole. So I always tend to go for the small one. You can see this is well used because a lot of the work you do will be small. And you can use that full length. You can see I've gripped it back here. They're rigid enough that if you take light cuts, you can do very deep boring work. But if you're doing long, large diameter boring, one of these boring bars is very useful. But as you can see, this has had a lot more use than this one. Parting off blade, yeah, they're handy, not absolutely essential, but you can do grooving with them and they're very, very useful. There are various sorts of parting off blade. The critical factor is when you buy them, try and buy one that doesn't have a lot of overhang. This one is a poor design because you've got all this mount hanging over your tool post and then you've got the blade. Whereas if you get one that's got just the blade hanging over, you've got less chance of it catching, which is what tends to happen with small lathes. They'll catch and lock up, possibly break the blade or move the job. So, yeah, this is, this is not it. I don't use this anymore. I've got another one I use. So, drill bit for the tail stop, absolutely essential. If you want to do boring, or you want to locate work, hold it in the chuck and the tail stop, and you should be holding it in the tail stop. If it's, uh, you know, any sort of reasonable length, and I mean anything over, say, well, two inches, really, as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, you're going to get a taper in your job, or you'll get harmonics. So you should be supporting your job where possible. So, a drill chuck, necessary. And in the drill chuck, you're going to use one of these, and it's a centre drill. And you use the centre drill to drill a hole in the end of the job, so the job then sits on this point, on the point of your centre, which is in your tail stop. Okay. Now, the dead centre that comes with the lathe will do the job. I've used them plenty of times and quite often they're handy because you can have long ones that actually, you can actually make them up yourself, easy to do, and make small ones that will fit in the chuck. And then you can have long dead centres and you can avoid issues of fouling the... Uh, the chuck or a live centre if you're you know, working in close and you haven't got a lot of room. So you can get by with this, no problem whatsoever, or you can replace it with one of these, a live centre. Now live centres come in various nose styles, and this is the latest one that I've got in, and this is by far the best, because when you're working in and your job is, say your job is there, you've got a lot less chance of fouling the live centre tip than if it's got a, just a regular cone shaped one, which most have got, a lot have got. So think about that. This is a very, very good design and it's what I would recommend if you're going to buy one. So there you go, that's it. Now people will, I've seen other videos on this subject, there's quite a bit of, quite a few views out there on what you absolutely need, but you don't need much at all. And of course, carbide's a good thing to start with, but 
because it's ready to go. You can replace the tips as you break them or wear them out. High speed steel is another thing to consider. And the beauty of high speed steel is of course that you can grind it to any shape you want. It is very forgiving. And when I say it's forgiving, I mean you can turn and do very light cuts with high speed steel, just take off a bee's whisker. You can't do that with carbide. Carbide will not give a good finish if you just go extremely light. You have to have the correct cutting depth and the correct speed and then you'd be right. But, uh, yeah, carbide also, the feed rate's also important on carbide. So carbide takes a bit of getting used to. High speed steel was a lot easier to use, but you have to understand uh, how to grind it, the tip angles, how to use it. But that's something you'll move on to. Your lathe will almost certainly come with a four-way tool post like this and you can put a set up a couple of tools in there just rotate them around as you want these are perfectly adequate you see these videos where people you know cover what tooling you need and they oh i got a quick change you've got to have a quick change tool post total rubbish you don't need to ha have to have a quick change tool post these are perfectly adequate in fact these are more rigid than a quick change tool post for a start you don't have any overhang i've used the four-way forever I've got a quick change tool post on the on the uh, Shorblin, only because I got it f for free, and they're handy. But you definitely don't have to have a quick change tool post. These will do a very very good job. Okay, moving on. So is that it? Is that all I need? Just these few tools? Well, almost, but not quite. You need a set of drills. So that you can use your boring bar, you must be able to drill a hole in the end of the job so you can then insert the boring bar. So ideally your, your set of drills would go to larger sizes than shown here, but this is just an example. And the other thing you need is an accurate measuring device that will measure internal and external. And this is just a, an example of a cheap digital caliper you can get and you can get all, all price ranges of these things but even the cheap ones are plenty accurate enough to, to do home handyman work made in China but then again everything you see here is made in China perfectly adequate the alternative is you can use an analogue vernier which is what they used to use back in the old days and people, some people still use them they are totally accurate and reliable because they haven't got a battery to go flat but this is what most people go for. So that is it. I mean, that is the absolute basic setup. And that would do everything that you need to do, want to do. You can expand out from this, of course, and the sky is the limit. But as far as I can see, this is all you need. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. I hope it helps you. See you next time. Cheers.